Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Last Fan Standing podcast. That's right, it is Last Fan Standing. It's not No Holds Barred, which is what it would usually be at this time. But uh, we decided to switch up the schedule a little bit, basically because we had a pay-per-view last night, which was the Elimination Chamber. Uh, We, of course, previewed that for you on the previous episode. And we thought, well, we don't have another pay-per-view for seven weeks. Seven whole weeks. Between now and WrestleMania. Uh, uh. So, like, if we didn't talk about the Elimination Chamber results this week, if we tried to talk about them next week, it would be kind of stale. Yeah. So we thought, why not do it this way? So this is the way the schedule is going to look for the next little while. We have, I tell you, there's ghosts down here. I know that I knew you couldn't hear that on the mic, but... The door down here in the No Holds Barred dungeon just keeps rattling back and forth. Uh, so the, the, what the schedule is going to be for the next little while is we have, of course, Last Fan Standing is going to be this week. We are going to be bringing you back-to-back weeks of the No Holds Barred podcast next week and the week after. And we got shit to talk about. We got some stuff that we're going to be able to talk about on those ones, whole buddy. Uh, and then we're going to go back to the regular schedule, and the, it may swap around a little bit again as we get closer to WrestleMania. Speaking of WrestleMania, uh, before we actually get into it, we have some WWE-related news that we can talk about. Stuff that just happened today. Yes. Just today, there was a news conference uh, attended by Vince and Steph and Triple H, where they did officially announce that WrestleMania 30 otherwise known as WrestleMania XXX for all you uh, porn aficionados R-rated. out there. It's R-rated, and yet Edge isn't in the company anymore, oh, which sucks. It sucks. But WrestleMania 30 is going to take place as we kind of anticipated. I think we sort of thought that it was go- leaning this way. Well, you told me about it, like, what, a couple months ago? Yeah, it was that, that like, this New Orleans where it's was going the, to be. Yeah, the, the, like, that it was the front runner. Yeah. So the... Mercedes-Benz Superdome in New Orleans, Louisiana, is going to play host to WrestleMania 30. Beautiful. Exactly. You may find it familiar because, of course, uh, Mercedes-Benz Superdome is where they held the Super Bowl this year, where they had the infamous power outage during the football game, which would make things really interesting if the goddamn power went out in the middle of WrestleMania and just half the stadium and, like... You see, like, CM Punk and Dolph Ziggler wrestling in the dark. <laughs> and I bet you their match is still the best one on the card. <laughs> I w- but I wouldn't doubt it. No, exactly. But we have certainly established that WrestleMania 30 is going to be in New, in New Orleans, Louisiana. Now, there was actually quite a bit of fan backlash to this because the generally accepted idea is that yeah. every... 10th wrestlemania should be in man square exactly yeah it should be it should be in madison square garden in new york yeah uh and while i can understand that like i i understand where wrestling purist fans would be like no every 10th one needs to be in madison square garden that's where wwf really that was their territory back in the day and msg was vince senior's building and and everything like that right and like it's understandable right. but i mean we looked it up earlier what's the maximum seating capacity in madison square like garden 20,800 yeah it's like the like the maximum sell out there ever has been 20,800 or yeah. something something like that i mean right now with with like the wrestlemania they're going to such good stadiums that right. can hold a lot more. It's like just... they're 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 talking about potentially doing a WrestleMania down the line at Cowboy Stadium in Dallas, which is like would be close to ninety five thousand people, and yet uh, you have all these purists basically on the internet that are like, no, go back to Madison Square Garden where it's twenty thousand people, and yeah. it's just like, well, you can't. You can't chop your audience's balls off like that for the biggest show of the year. You can't cut your audience down by three quarters just because it's WrestleMania and it's the 10th year. Yeah. Um, now, what they're doing this year, of course, where WrestleMania is in MetLife Stadium, is that they're doing the Hall of Fame ceremony in Madison Square Garden. Well, that's nice. Yeah, and it's, and it's great because, you know, you're, you're inducting Bruno San Martino, among others, and Bruno San Martino has sold out... Madison Square Garden, at least, oh God, I don't know, at Sorry. least, that's okay, uh, at least 170 times in his career, right? And he'll be able to sell out MSG one more time, and that's right. fantastic. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's a great idea for them to do that there. But I mean, 
you're gonna you're gonna have to come to terms with the fact there's never gonna be a WrestleMania in Madison Square Garden again. No. They may do other pay per views. Like I mean, Elimination Chamber last night was in a building that only holds seventeen thousand people. Yeah, I mean they they could have totally done that, Madison Square Garden. Absolutely. I mean, like pretty any well, kind of B-rated pay per view. Yeah, mean, they they could totally go back there. No question about it. Like I mean, uh, they they do this uh, night, or they did anyways. This uh, night of champions. Yeah, do that at, do that at Madison Square Garden every year. Why not? Every title in the company is on the line. It's a signi- It can be made to be a significant pay per view. Yeah. by way of it being in Madison Square Garden every year. So there, there are ways to keep MSG in the family. We'll put it that way. And you don't have to go to a Chinese restaurant. <laughs> more MSG, please. Oh, yeah. Oh, more MSG. More racial insensitivity on our podcasts. <laughs> but so that, that was the big piece of news that came out tonight, was the, or today. That was uh, WrestleMania 30 has its location and also has its logo. Which and is nice. Which is which is nice. It, you know it's what? It's clean. Yeah, and it's it's snazzy. It is. It's 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 polished and it, it jumps. It's jazzy. Exactly. It's jazzy, jazzy, snazzy, wazzy. Jazzy, snazzy, wiggly wow. Exactly. Um, it, it's of course sort of the traditional, not or not not traditional, but sort of a more contemporary sort of WrestleMania. And then, you know, and this is something that you kind of thought of. We kind of thought about because it's like. It's 30, and you know how WrestleMania loves to do their Roman numeral shit? Yeah. Uh, and it's like, well, are they going to call it 30, or are they going to call it XXX? Well, it's WWE, and they went there, so it's WrestleMania XXX. Um, and you know what? The logo looks great. logo yeah. looks fantastic. So hopefully they'll be able to put a quite a good card on it next year to back up the fact that at least their presentation is going to look very, very good. So you want to talk about this pay-per-view last night? Yeah, let's let's uh, jump into let's it. Let's jump into it. Okay. Um, just, just as another sort of little preface to everybody, we're both extremely tired. <laughs> yeah. So I, I um, worked and I, I don't know what you did. I, all, all I had to shovel and stuff. So okay, I, fair we, enough. we, you know, yeah, we both, we both did shit today, and so we're both kind of tired, but uh, we're gonna, we're gonna get through this. And unfortunately, uh, if if you want, guys want premium podcasts uh start watching making us money exactly. then we can do this for a living exactly oh that that or just buy us a tassimo brew maker so we can just make oh, coffee man. down here coffee down here would be awesome it'd be good um but uh yeah so we're both kind of tired the podcast may be shorter than normal because like i say this is kind of different for us to do it in this sequence but in any case Let's talk about Elimination Chamber. Went down last night. Um, you had, of course, the WWE Championship was on the line. The World Heavyweight Championship was on the line. Mm-hmm. Uh, the U.S. Divas. title was on the line. Yeah. Divas title was on the line. Uh, you had the Elimination Chamber match to determine number one contender for World Heavyweight Championship. Right. And there was always the ever-present fear and possibility of Dolph Ziggler cashing in money in the bank. Mm-hmm. Some of these things happened. Some of them didn't. Remember when we were doing the preview for the pay-per-view and we were like, this pay-per-view is sponsored by terrible products? Yeah. And we're scared that like if it's if it's sponsored by bad products, it's going to be a bad pay-per-view? Yeah. <sighs> it, it kind of felt that way, didn't sort it? Sort of. There are certain parts of the pay-per-view that felt like it just wasn't done very well. Like, there's so maybe, overall... Maybe because it was sponsored by the toys, that was mm-hmm. the shitty part, and... From the movie, maybe there's kind of some good stuff in the movie. Maybe there's yeah. So maybe some of the... maybe that that kind of made up for it. It's possible. It it's always possible. I mean, Nick Nick uh, philosophizes in here on Last Fan Standing. It's it, you know what? It's absolutely possible. So I mean, like there there was good and bad to be found in the show. There were some really good high spots, and there were some stuff that either felt weird or kind of pointless or what have you yeah but let's get into it um of course on the pre-show we had a tag team match on the pre-show that match was the team of brodus clay and tensai the dancing i don't know dancing teletubbies or whatever they have taking on team road scholars now uh brodus clay and tensai won this match they beat uh, Team Road Scholars in about five minutes. It yeah. wasn't uh, it, it wasn't much of a match. Um, I thought Team Road Scholars broke up. So did I. Was that not like 
they they broke up. They oh. said that they're still friends, but we're still best buds. Best buds, but we're going to do our own thing. Yeah, except on pay per view because <laughs> neither because creative doesn't know what to do with either of us. <laughs> so let's just ta- let's just team again. Um, yeah. So that kind of that kind of felt sort of weird that they were back together as a team. Also felt weird that they didn't win this match. We're talking about a team that well, you and I collectively thought was ready for a run with the titles. Yeah. And now they're jobbing to Brodus Clay and Tensai on the pre-show of a pay-per-view? I mean, of, of a B-level pay-per-view. Yeah. I mean, what, know? what can you do? I mean, they're... They're they're not even supposed to be together. No, I'm not even supposed to be here today. Yeah. No, like the, I, again, again, we just kind of <laughs> thought that the team broke up. But I mean, if, if they're going to keep them together, great. But keep them together and give them the belts. I would I would say either give them the belts or let them still feel like they matter. Yeah. And you don't feel like you matter when you're jobbing to Tensai and Brodus Clay on the pre-show. It's true. Uh, and again, this is nothing against Tensai or Brodus Clay. I like them both. Uh, and I like Tensai now that he's doing, now that he's doing this, now that he's being entertaining really? and not just, yeah, I thought, I thought he was, because they, they brought, they brought Tensai in and you know, he, yeah, he's, he's got to beat this whole stigma of, oh my, you used to be Albert. Yeah. Albert, right. A-train like, exactly. You used to be fucking a train and, you know, and, and we like to make fun of you for this because he's trying to be all super serious. Right. Like Asian monster. Mm. And he comes in and he has like a good, like one or two week run. Yeah. With Cena, and then people just start like, haha, you used to be Albert. Albert. Asian and, monster. Yeah, Asian Godzilla? monster. Godzilla? Gojira. Gojira. White Gojira. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you know, so I mean, people didn't have a reason to care. It was just like, oh, well, okay, he's here, whatever. Yeah. This This gives people a reason to maybe not necessarily care about him, but at least be entertained. I guess. I guess, I, you know? I mean... And, uh, you know, people are more... He's dancing. He is. He's dancing, and he's dancing badly, but that was kind of okay. It was cool when Public Enemy did it in ECW in 94, so... I guess. You know, it was only 17, or only like 19 years after that, so let's... Maybe we can keep doing that. Mm. I don't know. I just... It, it gives... I guess it gives people more of a reason to care what Tensai is doing than what was happening before. Yeah. Because as soon as, like... People only really seemed to care about what Tensai was doing when he was beating up Sakamoto, which was Sakamoto was his manager for a while. Right. And then they got rid of Sakamoto. And then Tensai was just like, okay, well, I guess I'm doing nothing anymore. I guess I'm just on the house shows. Yeah. I wasn't on TV for like two months. And then and then he comes back. And now so he's sort of doing that. So, you know, I guess it's it, it's better than the alternative. Let's put it that way. It's still not good, but it's better than the alternative. So the actual pay-per-view show started with uh, Alberto Del Rio defeating the big show by way of submission to retain the World Heavyweight Championship. Was there any surprise there? I don't think so. I think this is uh I think this is the way that um this is the way that we kind of expected that this match was going to go. You know what I mean? I think we we both kind of figured that uh that Alberto Del Rio was going to win this match and there was probably no real no real reason to think that they were going to take the title off of it or like they were going to put the title back on Big Show. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I, I just, I just, I figured this was the way that that was the way that the match was going to go. And what I thought was significant about it was that it was a clean victory. You know what I mean? Like it yeah. wasn't. It wasn't uh, something where like, oh, Ricardo Rodriguez got involved, or it wasn't. It wasn't a situation where anybody else got involved in the match, really, besides the two of them. And it was about as clean a win as you can possibly have, which indicates to me that this feud is over. Yeah, there's nothing that the Big Show can come back with and say that I wasn't prepared, or he cheated, or you know. Give me another match. Yeah, because right. It, exactly. it, it's done. Yeah, it's I, like you lost clean. I think it, it's done. 
the fact the fact that he's now lost three matches in a row to Del Rio, three title matches in a row. Yeah, I think that probably is a pretty good indicator that this feud is over. Um, but what I the one thing about this match, uh, and it was just the silliest fucking thing I think I've ever seen in my life. There was one spot in the match where Big Show for like the majority of the match was kind of feeling like um uh ricardo was screwing with him with like the i don't know the spit bucket or whatever the hell it was that he had oh really yeah like you know how uh ricardo brings that spit bucket yeah. and uh big show was apparently just like not happy with the fact that the spit bucket was there i guess or or something or other. Well, I guess he never is because I mean he got drenched with water. Well, that's true. Way to smash your microphone, sir. I know. That's Do all. I can. It's all good. Uh, so that was kind of distracting to him. And then at one point in the match, Big Show picks up the bucket. Yeah. And he's yelling at Ricardo like, "Don't uh, fuck this bucket," and, you know, <laughs> don't, so, wh- something like don't that. Fuck this bucket. <laughs> Don't, don't, no, don't fuck the bucket. Is the hole in the bucket? Dear Liza. (laughs) (laughs) Dear Ricardo. Ricardo. (laughs) But I need these peach baskets back. Um, But yeah, so he's got the bucket and he's he's holding it up like beside his head. Like the weirdest, the weirdest whatever. What the spot was supposed to be was Big Show's like standing like sort of in the corner and he's holding the bucket up literally beside his head. And he's yelling at Ricardo. Right. The spot was supposed to be Alberto Del Rio climbing, like running up on the ropes and doing that Enziguri thing that he does. That would make sense. Exactly. Into the bucket, knocking the bucket into Big Show's head, and he's all. Del Rio completely whiffs. He goes for it and misses by a country fucking mile. Just misses. How do you miss Big Show's head? It's like Pluto. How do you miss? How do you miss his head? It's crazy. Well, Pluto was, uh, you know what? Taken out you know what? Pluto's the... still a planet. Yeah. Screw you. <laughs> so I mean, but still, it's it, Big Show's got a big fucking head, okay. and yeah. and Del Rio goes for the Sinsegari and completely misses. So now Big Show's just standing there like a goof. He's not even saying anything anymore. He's just standing there holding the bucket by his head. It's like, what the hell am I supposed to do now? Exactly. Like, well, what am I supposed to do? Plan B, plan B, plan B. But but we, we don't have one. But they exactly they didn't go to a plan B. <laughs> Big Show just stood there, not moving, like a deer in the fucking headlights, until Del Rio picked himself back up and repeated the spot, and did it again. Oh man! And it's like, how do you how do you miss? How do you ignore a two hundred some pound Mexican <laughs> flying through the air <laughs> trying to kick you in the head? And missing, and then landing right behind you. How do you ignore? How do you not even just like at least turn around to look at? It? <laughs> Nothing. Big Show just stood in the corner, like like he got sent to detention, uh, <laughs> and he was just looking at nothing while Del Rio got up and repeated the spot and actually hit the spot. And after he hit the spot, then he put on the cross arm breaker and he course. got him to tap out. Um, which again, not only is it a clean win, it's a clean submission win. This feud is over. Um, but just, just what, that, that what was the, going the on image there? of Big Show holding the bucket beside yeah. his head and Del Rio going to kick him and just 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 Face flat out, out missing. It was oh, it was bacon, so funny. I just died. Bacon sausage. Oh, that was gonna be delicious. <laughs> I don't I don't know where that came from. <laughs> that was Big Show. <laughs> Oh yeah, big she has. <laughs> Just staring, staring out at his face. I'm gonna have some pancakes, please. And... <laughs> <sighs> oh, oh, there goes Alberto Del Rio. <laughs> I guess I can't move. He's got to repeat the spot. <sighs> so, uh, another another pay per view where the World Heavyweight Championship match kicks off the pay per view. I don't like this trend. I really don't. I don't like the fact that they're leading off shows with world title matches. Yeah. You know what? Uh, maybe maybe there's a reason for it. Maybe they think it generates the most interest, but I don't know. I don't Possibly. like it. M- maybe it gets people watching all no start off a pay-per-view with the Divas match. <sighs> but no, because then you you need something to stick in between 
<laughs> then divas stick in between. <laughs> no, you you need you need something to go in between like high point matches to let the audience kind of calm down and not give a shit. It's so, true. So like leave leave the divas matches later on in the card, but like. I have, I have no idea why the card couldn't have started with the match that we're about to talk about, which is Antonio Cesaro defending the U.S. title against The Miz. I don't really think anybody overly cares about this feud or about this match. I don't care about the feud. I like Miz as a wrestler. I, oh, I, so I do, too. to put him first on a card mm-hmm. is... I, I wouldn't do it. No, fair enough. But then again, you look at it this way. They've put their second top champion as the first guy on the card. So, you know, I guess it, it it's, it's kind of hard to, yeah, it, it's, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to, uh, to argue it one way or the other, I suppose. But we had Cesaro again, defending the U S title against the Miz, which Cesaro ends up winning by DQ DQ or translation knee to the junk yeah pretty much this this was a decent match um it was one of those things where like uh he had he had injured miz by doing that whole like cartwheel stupid thing right. that he did to him the other, the other right. week where he's just like <laughs> ragdolling him around which was actually kind of kind of cool um so he had injured miz's shoulder so Miz came in and his whole shoulder was all wrapped and everything like that. So, you know, target right on there. And, right. and Cesaro kind of focused on it, which makes sense. The finish to this match was so weird because Miz, Miz is making his comeback and he gets, uh, you, have, you had a little burp there? Yeah. Just... Didn't want to get it on the, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nick stifling burps. <laughs> um, fuck, where was I? <laughs> no. uh, Miz is making his hot comeback, and he's got Cesaro down, and he's going for the figure four. Right. As he goes for the figure four, Cesaro kicks one of his legs out from under him. Which is not a good thing when you're going for a figure four. No, probably not. Which causes Miz to fall down and knee Cesaro right in the nutsack. And actually, when I was watching it, I thought that wasn't supposed to happen because, like, Cesaro sold it like mad. Like, he he had that look on his face like, (laughs) and I was just like, you know what? That wasn't supposed to happen. (laughs) I think he was supposed to push him away or something, but, like, I I don't think that was supposed to happen. uh, Um, It turns out I think it, it was supposed to happen, but... It looked like it wasn't supposed to, which maybe that was just the point the whole time. Maybe they were just going to try to do something that yeah. didn't look like it was supposed to happen. Right. Which I'm all I'm all for in the world of wrestling because I find that the world of wrestling has become very predictable. So if something happens that is just like I don't think that was supposed to happen, it it, it lends it lends more credibility to professional wrestling yeah. as a whole. I would say. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so of course, uh, Miz lands on, uh, Cesaro's, uh, five languages and, um, <laughs> and, uh, no matter what language you speak, that's a disqualification cause it's a low blow. Yeah. So Cesaro ends up retaining the title, even though Cesaro was the one that did the action that directly led to the disqualification, that which was kind of, eh. yeah, you know, it, it is. But then again, I suppose if. I remember a match a long time ago where somebody had a steel chair and was going to try to hit somebody with it. And they did a drop toe hold, which caused them to fall down and hit their head on the chair. And then the person that did the drop toe hold got disqualified. Right. And I was just like, but he didn't. Yeah. What? It's kind of weird. So it's, you know. It's a weird backed up system. Yeah. It's kind of weird, but, you know, it was all right. And then. Miz is Miz is so is mad at this obviously because he was like I didn't do anything he he kicked my leg out yeah and he dropped stifling eggs. yawns sorry sir Cicero um, and the nets yeah he backs up and he kicks a forty five yard field goal like he just <laughs> he hoofs him Rochambeau style right between <laughs> the wickets um and that was great because that got a huge pop out of the crowd and the crowd was really loving that. Uh, so the, this rivalry, I feel, is probably going to continue. Well, the feud is still going. I would say the feud's still going, and uh, but I tell you, if this is going to be 
a WrestleMania match. Like if this is if the U.S. title is going to be defended at WrestleMania, I hope they add some kind of stipulation to it. I hope they don't just toss it on the pre-show because they they kind of like doing that for WrestleMania, taking one of the minor titles and yeah. putting the title match on the pre-show, which I don't really like. I think if you're if you're gonna go to the length of having a champion and saying you're going to get to defend your title at WrestleMania, put it on the main card. Put yeah. it where everybody's going to be able to see it. I mean, give somebody like our truth. Put put him on the pre-show. Yeah, exactly. And well, do do the battle ro- whole battle royal thing, which they didn't do last year. But like, do a a thirty or forty man battle royal on the pre-show to get nice. everybody everybody in the company on the WrestleMania card. Yeah, no reason not Why to. Not? I think it. I don't know. I think I think it'd be smart. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so much for that. Idea. Moving on. Moving on. Uh, like I say, I'd, I'd like to see a stipulation added to that match if it does end up on WrestleMania. The third match on the card, we're still talking mid-card here, mm-hmm. is the Elimination Chamber match. The only match on the card. The only match on the card. That fits the stipulation. Third. Third match. match. I don't. I, uh, I, I don't know. Booking booking jobs to email for booking job email no holds apart podcast at gmail dot com because <laughs> I promise you we can book this shit better than that. Anyways, the elimination chamber match goes on third, which was of course uh, Randy Orton, Chris Jericho, Mark Henry, Jack Swagger, Kane, and Daniel Bryan. Winner of this match uh, gets the World Heavyweight Championship title match at WrestleMania. WrestleMania. Right? Uh, everybody does their entrances. Jack Swagger actually comes out first. And Swagger and uh, what's-his-face there, uh, Hillbilly Jim, uh, Ze- Zeb Coulter, uh, gets in and they cut a promo. And right. the promo wasn't as hot as the first one was, but it wasn't bad. It just It just wasn't as hot as the first one. So they get out, they cut the promo. Everybody else comes out. Nobody else gets a promo. It was just... Jack Swagger and Zeb Coulter get the promo. They're special. And so it's just like right away I was thinking <laughs> like there's something there's something going on here. Either Swagger's going to be the first one eliminated yeah. or he could win the damn thing. Right. Lo and behold, Jack Swagger, Jack wins, Swagger the wins the thing. Jack Swagger is your winner of the elimination chamber, last defeating Randy Orton who had eliminated Chris Jericho who combined with Randy Orton and Jack Swagger had eliminated Mark Henry, right. who had eliminated both Kane and Daniel Bryan. I think he I got, got that right. I, I nailed it. I nailed it. So Jack Swagger is the number one contender for the World Heavyweight Championship. Uh, this this is pretty weird because Jack Swagger and um, Randy Orton, when they were last, mm-hmm. uh, the, the roll to a pin... For Randy Orton, the the what, small what? the small package was a really interesting choice there because like after they had eliminated Mark Henry, I think uh, you know obviously you're down to a triple threat match, and I think the tri- you actually have the times here. I'm just going to grab this and take a peek. Um, Mark Henry was, is eliminated at about twenty three and a half minutes, and then. They're in a triple threat match there for about eight more minutes. It's not until uh, all about 31 and a half that the next elimination comes. Right. So for eight minutes, this is a triple threat match. And then finally, after a couple of reversals and everything like that, Randy Orton hits the RKO on Chris Jericho and pins him. So now it's one-on-one. It's Swagger and Orton. And, Orton. Right. and rather than them actually really doing anything, Swagger sneaks up from behind Orton after he was kind of trash talking Jericho a little bit and just, just rolls him up. Just, just small pack or yeah. Small package or schoolboy uh, schoolboy schoolboy. Yeah. Just, 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 just schoolboys him and pins him and that's it. And that was the end of the match. And I'm yeah. sitting there thinking like the, the littlest bit of the wrestling fan in the back of my head is like, I wonder if he cinched up on that. He might have because like, I mean that that doesn't seem like a the right way to end. It that. doesn't seem like a good. You finish, would think does that it? Randy Orton would be able to, you know, power out or kick out of that, and right? Or at least get the match going 
possibly five more minutes. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, I don't know if maybe they thought they were running short on time or, or what they were doing, but, um, yeah, it seemed, it, I know it just, it just kind of seemed weird that an elimination chamber match, one of the most physically intimidating matches that WWE has ends on a schoolboy pin. Mm. Just kind of, you know, I don't know. It wasn't, it wasn't like it, was like sour taste in my mouth or anything. I didn't even necessarily think it was bad. It was just a weird choice. Right, right. But in any case, Swagger wins. Swagger versus Del Rio has the chance to be very good. There's a lot of people online that's hating on this match. That it's just like, uh, Al- Alberto Del Rio is the biggest name in this match, and and that's not a good thing. And why? <sighs> I mean, of, of course, Alberto is is the biggest name i mean mm-hmm. he he's the best what what can you do right besides from cm punk i mean he's one of my best wrestlers yeah so, uh, i think i think people look at it like if randy orton would have won the elimination chamber like randy orton versus alberto del rio orton's the biggest name in that even though he doesn't have the belt so i just think like having orton in that main event spot people think like okay he's a bigger name that makes that automatically makes it a better match i don't agree with that i think i know but jack swagger i mean he, from when he made his entrance into the wwe until now right he's been working up i mean mm-hmm. he he is a good wrestler absolutely oh swagger's a fantastic wrestler and i'm randy orton he's had countless belts i right. mean he's had countless titles why not give mm-hmm. it to somebody like jack swagger exactly I, I think who, who deserves it exactly, and I and I think you, you you take this opportunity to build young stars right here, and Swagger. I don't know exactly how old Swagger is, but I know he's not very old. And you you take you take the opportunity here on the grandest stage to build a new star, and the quality of the match isn't about just the match itself. It's also about the build. And I think of everyone that was in this match, the best build based on the two characters that you could make coming out of the elimination chamber is Alberto Del Rio and Jack Swagger. Most definitely. Because you got this whole racist undertone stuff that Swagger and Zeb Coulter are doing. And uh, I hate to keep harping on this, but Del Rio's Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> no, like it's 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 a built-in storyline. It's it, it it gives it gives the creative writers an excuse to be lazy, and they love that. Yeah. So I mean, like it's just it's a built-in storyline. the The only other storyline that I thought would have been good coming out of the match, like in like I said in my predictions, is if was if Mark Henry won, right? Because it it me just means like okay. Del Rio just got out of this program with the big show. Now he's got to face Mark Henry. And, uh, you know, I just like that. That's a good build in my eyes, too. But they've got time for that. They can do that after this whole program with Swagger, um, in which I firmly believe maybe not at WrestleMania, but maybe in the months following WrestleMania, Jack Swagger could very easily get that belt. He could. And uh, and and I, I wouldn't uh, and I wouldn't argue with it one bit. But I seem, or actually, I shouldn't say I seem, we seem to like this program better than a lot of people seem to like it on the internet. And uh, we're smarter. So, you know, mm-hmm. there we go. What? What? <laughs> Stockton 209. <laughs> what? Caesar Gracie Jiu Jitsu. Um, so we're now going to uh, The Shield versus Ryback, Sheamus, and John Cena. Or Shield. Shield. Justice awaits you. <laughs> I fucking love that promo. <laughs> Thank you, Brad Maddox, for doing that promo. Um, yeah, so the Shield versus Ryback, Sheamus, and Cena, or as I saw on, or we saw on that one uh, yeah. thing, uh, the one uh, review show of it, uh, Cena's uh, Breakfast, Breakfast Club, Club which yeah. that was really <laughs> that funny. That was very funny. Um, good match. A fan, just, just really Excellent good. Match. Anybody, Anybody up to this point that doubted the shield in any capacity, Mark or not, had to look at this match and be like, those guys are legit. Oh yeah. Like those guys are are fantastic. All three of them can work. It's not like 
it's not like sort of like an an evolution thing where you had like right. Ric Flair could really work and Orton was a good worker and Triple H was kind of eh, and, <laughs> and Batista just couldn't work with fucking Dean Malenko on speed like you know it, this is one of these things where all three of these guys can work even oh, yeah. Roman Reigns who's supposed to be like the quote unquote powerhouse Roman Reigns can work so I mean these these guys are phenomenal, doubly impressive over the uh, the previous match that they had, the one at uh, TLC. Yeah, and I thought it was going to be really hard to top that match. In terms of high spots, they probably didn't top the match, but in quality of Qual- match, oh yeah, most, absolutely, absolutely, the the craziness of the match, yeah. Um, was, uh, I love it. Was uh, Reigns uh, spearing Sheamus <laughs> through the? Uh, through the barricade, which was great, because a lot a lot of these spots, um, I actually have to give credit to uh, Cena's Breakfast Club because uh, <laughs> I, I just I just love that name. Um, I have to give them credit because they went a long way to making some of the things that the Shield did look like it came out of nowhere, right? And that's not just a credit to the person doing the move, but the person taking the move. They have to make it look good. It's true, yeah. And that the spear on Sheamus looked fantastic. And that's a credit to both Sheamus and Roman Reigns. And the spear on Ryback right at the end of the match also looked phenomenal. And that's a credit to both guys. Um, What you looking at, sir? Uh, Just going over the review. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Um yeah, I just I, I was I was so impressed by even really everybody in this match. All six of them really uh really, you know, worked very well and everybody got a chance in the match. I think if you're looking for quote unquote the MVP of this match, it's gotta be it's gotta be Dean Ambrose. Like it's uh, got it's gotta be Ambrose. Most, most absolutely. Just uh he, he's such a good wrestler. He's crazy and and character. <laughs> I mean, he, he's got it all. Oh my god! Like he's and and like I I feel bad for the fans in WWE who didn't get to experience Dean Ambrose in the Indies because in the Indies he was so good and it's just like this is like this is one of the top fifteen or twenty guys in the world for for a lot of years and then now he's finally in WWE and he finally gets to sort of display some of that and he's so over the top. He, he so is. I mean when when um Seamus put him, you know, on the ring and put his yeah. arms back and did like the ten bros to right. him, then afterwards uh Nandros just like Puts his arm up. Yeah, and he's drops. He, he, just, <laughs> so he like, stands what? up straight and he just like he puts his hands up and then he just falls. <laughs> just like who am I going to fight? Oh wait, yeah, exactly. <laughs> or um, when he's when he's kind of like when he's working on Cena and he's 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 waiting for Cena to get back up and he's like standing there yeah. on his tiptoes, tip-toes almost like he's drops, almost like he's jazz hand drops. Gets up, yeah. just like get up, he just, just get up, get up. He drops, he drops, and he just. <laughs> pounds the canvas with his fist like he's just like he's gonna snap if Cena doesn't get up in a second and he's just like Duh, and he pounds on the mountain it's just like jesus christ keep your kids away from him like he's he's, he's so crazy and uh i was just we're we're obviously we're we're marking out so bad uh for them because uh you know as the saying goes we believe in the shield very clearly we believe in the shield Believe in the shell. Um, but yeah, I mean, Roman Reigns was just a spear machine. He was running around spearing everybody in this match. It was yeah. a good finish with Rollins pinning Ryback. Dean Ambrose just fucking insane. Um, we thought the ending looked kind of wonky with, uh, like nobody really there to stop Cena from breaking up the pinfall. It's but he just kind of falls over. Well, I, I think when he, uh, when he threw, um, What's his name out of the ring? Uh, Rollins? Rollins, right. yeah. I think... Uh, Ro- w- no, w- not Rollins, is, Reigns. Reigns. Right. His uh, arm came back and struck Cena. Oh, okay. Something like that. It's like I, I, something, I think I something saw that, happened. But I, I don't know. <laughs> right. I could have enough. just been seeing things. <laughs> we're, we're making excuses for Cena's Breakfast Club. Yeah. No, um, 
but so like the the ending kind of looked maybe a little bit wonky but yeah. I, I i thought it was a good finish like the whole the the, uh, the, the cena robot went to error yeah. <laughs> the, cena, <laughs> the cena indestructible robot was like lost match lost match does not compute i can't feel pain anymore <laughs> <laughs> no pain is felt. No selling is done. But uh, he, his Cena was actually pretty good in this match. So I mean, I can't, I can't, uh, can't hate too much on the on the on the old fella. Well, I guess. But uh, fella, Seamus, fella. Um, fella. But you know, I thought it was good. Kind of interesting that Ryback is the one that takes the pinfall loss. Well, they can't make Cena get the pinfall right because that's fucking insane the cena is the company's fanboy exactly he's the robot there are two rules when it comes to john cena rule number one is john cena can never lose on pay-per-view rule number rule number two is about fight club (laughs) sorry okay rule number two we don't talk about (laughs) fight club rule number three is rule number one does not count if he's in a match with the rock Right. <laughs> That's it. Okay. Because The Rock's rule number one, that The Rock can never lose on pay-per-view, uh, supersedes Cena's rule because it's been around longer. True. <laughs> fuck, fuck this company. <laughs> no. Um. So, but yeah, so I guess, I guess, you know, Cena can't take the pinfall loss and they don't want to give the pinfall loss to Sheamus either. No. Because, so, well, Sheamus is up there. Sheamus is, is uh, oh. SmackDown Cena. Yeah. So, yeah, fair enough. Um, so, you know, I guess they got to give it to Ryback. It's just like poor Ryback has been, I don't think Ryback's won a pay-per-view match in a few months. No, he's so getting pretty shitted on. Maybe he's, you know, well, he's still over with the fans. So I guess that makes sense. Uh, the next two matches that we had on the card were really kind of filler matches. We're not going to take very long to talk about them. Uh, there was an impromptu matchup between Dolph Ziggler and Kofi Kingston. Why? Why not? Translation. Yeah, you know, it wasn't it wasn't a great match. It was they they were only given like four minutes, so they they had to try to get all their shit in in four minutes. Um, so I mean, you know, the match the match was okay. I mean, the match was good because it had Dolph Ziggler in it and it had Kofi Kingston in it, and they're both really exciting. So like they they were doing all their stuff, but again, it was really only a four minute match. They didn't have a lot of time to do anything. Yeah. Uh, Dolph Ziggler, of course, ends up taking the victory because why would you give your guy that has money in the bank a loss on the pay-per-view before WrestleMania? So you can't do that. So so Ziggler ends up winning. Uh, Biggie Langston goes all South Central on uh, on Kofi Kingston after the match. Uh, really just beats the ever-living hell out of him. And, uh, you know, yeah, there was that. Yeah. Then there was the Divas match. Oh, boy. The most hottest match on the card. I honestly and truthfully, I cannot tell a lie, went to the bathroom. Cannot tell a lie. I went to the bathroom and took a pee. And when I came back, Caitlin had won the match. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, You know what? I cannot tell a lie. I waited until they were both in the ring. Yeah. The bell rang. Yeah. I got up and I went and I took a pee. And I came back in, and Caitlin had won the fucking match. It was like three minutes long. Okay, whatevs. Uh, Caitlin retains. I thought Tamina was going to win, but again, at the end of the day, it's the deepest match. Who really cares, really? Yeah. Uh. And now, since we are recording this on Monday night and Raw starts in 15 minutes, we're going to get to our main event of the evening, which Ooh. is Rock Cena 2. Rock Cena 2. Rock, sorry. No, that's what we're going to have at fucking oh. WrestleMania. It's Punk Rock 2. Punk Rock. Punk Rock 2. The Rock defending the WWE Championship against CM Punk, who in his mind is also defending the WWE Championship. <laughs> um, so it's kind of convoluted and fucked up. Um, the Rock, of course, defeats CM Punk to retain the title. Rock is going to WrestleMania to face John Cena twice in a lifetime, once in a while, whatever you want to do. And of course, that, yeah, that's uh, basically... 
I mean, you saw it coming from a mile away. Well, it you, saw, you saw it coming as soon as Cena won the Rumble. Yeah. Like, it's pretty much as soon as Cena won the Rumble, it's like, well, it's going to be Rock Cena too. We even said that. The uh, the three of us, me, you, and Tyler, sitting watching the Royal Rumble. Yeah. Cena won the Rumble. We all looked at each <laughs> other and we're like, well, Rock Cena too. I guess. That's the way it's going to go. Because it's like there's no reason whatsoever for Cena to be like, I'm going to challenge the world heavyweight champion. Why? Then you'd have to move to SmackDown, you dumbass. <laughs> Nobody wants to be on SmackDown, not even Booker T. Um, <laughs> the only one that wants to be on SmackDown is The Rock because he's like, I created this show. I just want to visit. I don't want to stay here. <laughs> um, so I'm, This was... A comparable match to the one at Royal Rumble. It was okay. It was okay. I felt I just maybe it's maybe I'm wrong in saying this. I felt like it was slower. I felt like it was a slower paced match. It, it was than than what we saw at Rumble. Um, yeah. and maybe that's a credit to uh, Rock not certainly not being able to work the schedule that he used to work. Do you know Rock is forty? Is he? Do you believe that? I didn't believe that when I read it. Rock is 40 years old. Wow. I remember when Rock was like, back in my day, um, Rock was like 27 and fighting Hulk Hogan at WrestleMania. And that seems like three or four years ago. Yeah. And he's 40. But it's not. That really makes that, me feel old. I, I know. <laughs> it's insane. Like, just knowing how old these old superstars are yeah, that, know, that right? you were watching back in the day and it's just like what <laughs> really it's like R- what, what really do you, what do you what do you mean trish stratus is really what a, really <laughs> really really um oh, oh miz we love you um but yeah I thought, I thought it was kind of a weak finish with the whole Paul Heyman getting up and picking up the rock and holding him against the ropes. Okay. Be- before we get to the finish. Okay. What's with every CM Punk and Rock match? Uh-huh. So a, two. Two. Yeah. <laughs> the, there's something going wrong with the announce table. Oh God. Oh yes, the announce table. The the, the also famous announce table. It did not break. No, it did not break. And CM Punk did the rock bottom to the rock. He did. He stole. He, rock, rock had a stored finisher, and Punk stole that finisher. <laughs> he did. He has the, he he has the move thief L1, ability. L1, L2 together, and he stole the finisher. Man. And he went for it, and he hit the rock bottom. And unlike at Royal Rumble, when the table gave out before they could do the rock bottom, Mm. this time they reinforced the table a little too much, apparently, and the table didn't break (laughs) when Punk did the rock bottom. So Rock is just laying there fucking hating life, and (laughs) Punk is standing there kind of looking at him for a second, and you can see like this little smirk comes on his face. He's just like... (laughs) (laughs) And, and then he scampers back in the ring. Um, but yeah, no, uh, yeah, that that was that was good though. That was definitely entertaining because I just like as soon as that happened, I just put my head in my hands and I was just like, oh my god. Well, to tell Why? you the truth, it, it didn't beat when the table actually uh, collapsed. No, it wasn't. Um, it wasn't nearly as no, funny. It, it wasn't nearly as funny <laughs> because like Rock's going for it and then they just. <laughs> They just fall. It was great. And that one, you actually see see a buggy. Yeah. You actually like, see him ah. laugh. He's just like. I, uh, that happened. Oh, damn it, wrestling. <laughs> that <laughs> happened. That just happened. <laughs> um, so, you know, weak, weak finish a little bit. Um, yeah. Rock, of course, retains, which we all saw coming. We all knew that was going to happen. Uh, and you know what? If they would have done it well, I wouldn't have been as sort of miffed about it, but. I didn't think they did it well. No. Like, I think you could have had Rock win the title just better than he did. Or or not win the title, retain the title better than he did. And uh, people can argue that point with me, I guess. But at the end of the day, I just looked at it like it was kind of a lazy finish. Um, My question is, where does Punk go from here? Um, He's been beaten twice clean on pay-per-view. By the guy that's got the belt. Right. We already know Rock Cena 2 is set up. Is there a feud out there 
for CM Punk that keeps him relevant? See, I, d- I don't really know if there's a feud out there because, I mean, he, he's been feuding with The Rock. Mm-hmm. Who, who does he have to go to? I mean, maybe there might be something like a straight edge society coming back. I would fucking love it, the straight edge society. I, I would love it, too. I mean, maybe that's something that they're going with now that he's lost the belt. And, I mean, he has really no rivalries. Ri- 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 <laughs> rivalries? Yes, he has to go. go back to. So y- um, You're right, because, I mean, like, the rivalries he could go to is Rock. Rock's now in a program with Cena right. for the next seven weeks. Cena is in a program with The Rock for the next seven weeks. Right. Um, he used to feud a little a bit with Daniel Bryan, and that's not an option because Daniel Bryan is in a babyface tag team champions. He's the tag team champions, so that's not going to work. Um, I don't know. I don't know who Jericho. Maybe possibly. Maybe you have, a, but like, how many fucking rematches are we going to put on this WrestleMania card? Because if if Punk gets in a program with Jericho. Well, they wrestled last year at WrestleMania. So how many rematches yeah. are you going to have? That, then that Triple be... H steps forward. I want one more shot at The Undertaker. Yeah. Like, how God, many... no. It'd just be a whole <laughs> friggin' WrestleMania recap. Just be like, you know what? We need a redo on this one. <laughs> so that, I think, would be the worst possible thing that they could do. But maybe, maybe Punk uh, finally maybe hires The Shield full-time. And starts a new stable with the shield. That that would be interesting. Or maybe I, I even heard somebody whisper like maybe he could feud with Brock Lesnar. And I was like, why would he feud with Brock Lesnar? They're both Paul Heyman guys. I know. That and makes he's like, no well, sense. Well, well, him and him and Heyman weren't on the same page last night. I was like, yeah, but that's no reason for him to feud with Lesnar. Yeah. Well, I, any sense. I mean, I guess you can look at it at a sense that they are both Paul Heyman guys, but maybe. Uh, CM Punk wants Paul Heyman all to himself, mm-hmm. and Brock Lesnar is back. So, well, they maybe. they might have a feud over that. I don't know. That's possible. Who's yeah. to say? Who's to say? Who's to say what's right or wrong? Who's to say where's my schlong? <laughs> It's in your pants. Oh, it's in my pants. Not keep for, it in there. Not, not, <laughs> not for long. <laughs> See, you can rhyme everything, uh, ladies and gentlemen. The only thing that I know for sure is that episode number four of the Last Fan Standing podcast has come to a close. It has, and now, unfortunately, unfortunately, we do not have Shiki Baby. Yeah, to we close don't. Us out. Shiki Baby passed out in the corner, so we're gonna we're gonna let him go for a few weeks and. Uh, See if uh, see if he can uh, stabilize himself long enough that he can come back. And once he comes back, he'll have a couple of other, other friends and some more noises. Exactly. He's gonna have he's gonna have a lot more to say. <laughs> oh yeah. Um. So this episode, I believe, has run down to a close. I think what we might do on the next episode of Last Fan Standing. Since we got a little bit of a reprieve now, we sort of we know where we're heading basically with WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. So unless there's like a big WrestleMania development, I think what we'll probably do for the next episode of Last Fan Standing, which you're not going to hear for three weeks, uh, because next two weeks is going to be right. no holds barred. Right. I think we'll start getting into TNA because we haven't talked really any about TNA. Yet. We haven't, but there's been some like. The build up to WrestleMania is Ex- big. So, oh, well, absolutely. I mean, we we had to talk about it. Ex- yeah, it's it's it's. We kind of credit that to when we started doing the wrestling yeah. podcast. Yeah. It's like, well, we did it in January. Well, what's in January? Royal Rumble. Where yeah. does Royal Rumble lead? Right into WrestleMania. <laughs> so, fair enough. But I think we're going to start talking a little bit of TNA. And I'm a very passionate uh, advocator that TNA is not a very good product. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you're a TNA fan. I, I want you to listen. I want you to listen to our podcast because I think I have pretty coherent reasons why TNA is not a good product. But um, we're going to be watching the next few episodes of Impact. Most um, definitely. And, uh, which, of course, airs Thursday evenings on Spike TV. So you can see hear, see and hear what we're talking about. Um, so I think we'll start talking about TNA on the next episode. And uh, we'll start breaking into that because they're the... 
I mean, they're the major competition in the professional wrestling market or sports entertainment or whatever you want to call it. So, you know, we should be giving them time. Eventually, we'd like to talk about things like Ring of Honor and other oh, indie stuff as well. Get there. So, we'll get there. Give it just time. yeah, give, give it, it time. give it some time and uh and you know, WWE is just the biggest product out there, so we we give it the most attention. Closing thoughts? Closing thoughts. The Elimination Chamber was good. There were some high points, there uh-huh. were some low points. Yeah. There was a bathroom break. There was a bathroom break. Good, not good, not great. There was no pizza. There was McDonald's. It was a happy time. It was the best of times. It was the <laughs> blurst of times. You stupid monkey. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is a close on episode number four of Last Fan Standing. Uh, YouTube.com slash user slash no holds barred podcast. Ustream.tv slash channel slash no holds barred dash podcast and dash hangout for the two separate channels hangout is for last fan standing exactly hangout is for last fan standing uh find our regular podcast on itunes by searching the no holds barred podcast or no holds barred podcast at gmail.com uh follow the show on twitter at nhb underscore podcast add us on skype now that yes. MSN Messenger is going the way of the dinosaurs, add us on Skype, nhb.podcast, to be a guest on one of our shows. And find us online, our website, yes. at www.noholdsbarred.com. Net sixty three dot net exactly. No holds barred dot net sixty three dot net. Find us there, motherfuckers. Uh, uh, the archive. Yeah, yeah, and, exactly. All of our archive shows doesn't show up on YouTube or doesn't show up, you know, on UStream. It's possible. The shield <laughs> of justice <laughs> is waiting for it you. It awaits you. Thank you very much, everybody. Follow Nick on Twitter at RN Stevenson. Follow me on Twitter at Blockbuster underscore guy. And we are deuces for another week. Deuces. Cheers. That's Nick with a little bit of, what is that, Crown Royal? Crown Royal, sir. Oh, we're going to get into the party. Oh, boy. See you. Put it in your pants. Yeah, see you, everybody. Later.